Okay, I promised I would do a little bit on um, how we're preparing our meats. The pork ribs, you'll notice here, they have sort of a pinkish hue to them. Now that pink is not the fact that it's raw. They're not fully cooked yet, but that reddish color comes from the fact that we're smoking it. Now if you'll notice down here, we have some wood sitting in a small tray right on top of the heat dispersor or uh, the heat separators over the burners. Now I have two burners on, those two are not. The bottom of this pan here is filled with water just as if I was broiling because I want that moisture up in the meat while I'm smoking this. And I can cook this at about 350 this way. Get a strong smoky flavor. Get a really tender rib that just falls off the bone and that's just what we're looking for and this is how you can do it just on a plain old grill okay now keep some good sized chunks of wood for uh, smoking if you can't find them big enough buy those cooking chunks and split them down so simple enough rotate your meat occasionally this should take about two and a half three hours on average when it comes to ribs a brisket will take a little bit longer, about two hours more than that. Well, good cooking. There we go. We'll come back out again. Just put on a few more wood chips again. If you notice that color, it's just a little more on the red side. And each time I add more wood chips, that's going to get a little deeper. Okay. Now I notice that I'm getting a little bit low on water. So I'm going to take get your water here. Just pour right on in there. Or if you make a little mess with it, it's not going to hurt a thing. These will use up the water. And if that happens, those ribs are going to come out real dry and that won't be any good. They're going to form a bit of a crust on the outside. That's not unusual. But uh, that red that you see, that red band around the outside of your barbecue, that's what it is. We're forming it now. All the flavor is the tannins in the meat. Okay, I figured while I was doing uh, some information on how to make barbecue, and that's the uh, clips that you've seen on the ribs. Well, I thought, you know, every once in a while people just uh, look in the fridge and notice that the barbecue sauce that they saw, thought that they had was maybe out of date and I thought I would show you something real quick about how to just improvise one. Just throw one together. Now I've pulled out two cans of tomato sauce. Now this is the first time and the only time that you're ever going to hear me exalt the value and virtues of cans. However, when it comes to tomatoes, and let me get off on this for just one moment, when it comes to tomatoes, um, and you go to the grocery store and you see the ones that are sitting there on a clipped piece of vine and it is sold as uh, tomatoes ripened on the vine. Okay, well that's sort of an industry ploy to trick you into uh, buying something that really isn't top quality. When you hear a farmer or somebody that has raised tomatoes mention the term ripened on the vine, what they're referring to is a tomato that was ripened on the vine while that vine was still attached to the plant and the plant was still planted in the ground. Okay, That's what makes them real sweet. All other tomatoes, whether it's just a piece of vine that was snipped that you pay extra money for at the grocery store, or if it was one that was picked and uh, sent for, uh, packed off for produce sections in grocery stores, they all came off of that plant green. And the minute they came off of the plant, the sweetening process became drastically impaired. Okay? So, what happens to those ripe ones that are on the vine? They don't go to the grocery stores. Absolutely not. When they go, come off of the vine in the field, they go right into the canneries and they put them into this. And this is a sweeter product than what you're going to get at the grocery store. You may get lucky at some farmer's markets or also if you have some local civic gardens, those will have good fresh tomatoes. Pick them off of the vine yourself and make sure they're red when you get them. Those will be truly sweet. Otherwise, this is going to be the best way. We're going to start with a basic tomato. That seems to work well for me. And then I just pulled out a few spices that I normally like to use if I'm going to do a quickie. And that is this uh, sage 
and chili powder and this is uh, uh, cayenne uh, some Tabasco sauce here. You can use other forms of uh, red sauce like that. They work fine. A bit of garlic um, and some brown sugar I have. Now you can use regular white sugar. You could use honey. You could uh, even caramelize some onions, puree those, and use that as a sweetener. Uh, also some people like to put in bourbon, tequila. Doesn't matter. Make it however you want. But this is just a good standard way to start. And I'll start by uh, mincing some of this, putting in a little bit of oil or butter, uh, and then cooking it at low temperature just so it will release its oils and the flavors. At that point then I'll add in this and start sweetening, sweetening it a little bit and adding in my other flavors. Now I can't tell you how much of anything I'm going to use. I don't really know. I'm just going to start putting it in there and I'm going to add sugar until it tastes sweet enough. That's how much I'm going to use, and that's exactly what you should do also. So, please, try this method, give it a shot, and I'm going to show you what I do here in a moment when we get it up and going. Okay, we're back and ready to get this underway. Now, what I have done is put about a tablespoon each of butter and olive oil into this little pan. I'm going to uh, put this under put under this a low flame. Let's put a little garlic in there. Okay, I just minced that. Now I'm going to wait for that uh, butter to melt, those fats to combine, for the uh, garlic to release. That's just to get the flavor of that garlic in the oils. The oils will combine easy, uh, the fat, I should say, will combine easy with this tomato sauce, which of course has some fat in it also. And then uh, from there, we're going to start working in our other flavors. And again, like I say, I don't do measurements, and you should create your barbecue sauce to be your way. If you want to add pineapple into that, fine, use pineapple, make a great sweetener. If you want yours to be kind of a smoky flavored sauce, well then use some of that liquid smoke. Put a few drops of it in there and just keep adding a little bit at a time until it's smoky enough for you. All right? You can tailor these sauces, uh, sauces any way you want. After all, it's just a sauce, right? Make it taste the way you want it to taste. And stop buying those things at the store. They're chock full of uh, corn syrup and, you know, high fructose corn syrup. It's high calorie, it's bad for you, and you should just really avoid this stuff. Okay, butter has melted. We're starting to get just a little bit of a release of the garlic. We'll keep this up for just a little bit, and then I'm going to add in my tomato sauce. Oh, there we are again. Well, I have just strained out the garlic from my butter and olive oil. Now, I have the flavor that I want and that was lightly toasted just till it became sort of a uh, kind of a nut colored, peanut colored, that was when I took it off the heat. Now you have to be careful to do that slowly. If you have that heat too high, that garlic is going to taste burned and it's going to ruin your sauce. So be careful. Then just go ahead and toss in your tomato sauce. You're up and running. lumps in that sugar. If you feel a lump in your sugar as you're putting it in, just bust it up a little bit. It should incorporate nicely. There we go. Now I'm going to put in just a few of these spices just to get it started. And as I said before, the way I'm doing it today is just a little bit of sage. And this is a very Texas spice. So is cumin. And you can do cumin in this sauce, but be very gentle with it because uh, it can overwhelm a dish quickly. A little bit of the chili powder. Now your chili powder is going to be brand specific. Every single one of them tastes different. They're all different combinations of spices, each one. And frankly, I find the best ones in the Hispanic markets. 
they uh, go through so much of the stuff that's always fresh, and then there's multiple different kinds. Now this is a little bit of cayenne. Go lightly with that, and uh, just a little bit at a time until you bump the heat up on this until where you want it. You don't have to have any of it. You don't have to have any heat. Uh, but I like the flavor that comes with some of these things, and well, with that flavor comes the heat. So there's my start. It's going to start to simmer. When it does, I'll taste it, correct the seasonings, and I will have a barbecue sauce, plain and simple. By the way, usually this ends up taking me somewhere in the neighborhood of about two to uh, three tablespoons of chili powder by the time it's all said and done. So there will likely be a lot of chili powder in this, and that sauce is going to get a lot more of a brown color. Okay. Good luck on your sauce. Well, it looks like it's about done. You notice the bones are starting to protrude on the ends a little bit more here. The meat is tearing apart. It's kind of loose. Now, my ends were a little bit overcooked on the small end over here. This is all right. still smoking a little bit. I'm going to leave that on there for about, oh, another 15 minutes. Let it absorb the rest of that smoke and we'll pull it off. Alright, checking my sauce now. now. This is something, if you're going to be a good cook, you've just got to do. Okay. It's nice and sweet, but it's missing a bit of the spiciness it could have. So I am going to bump up the chili powder some more. I've already done it once before. Add in about another maybe, looks like a half a teaspoon I put in there. I'm going to up this cayenne also. The flavor of it I like a lot. And it's good and sweet. Well, I put in about half of that brown sugar that I had, however much that was, I would guess it was somewhere around a third of a cup of brown sugar, somewhere in there. But that was just to my taste. Your taste may be you want it a little sweeter or not quite as sweet. So give it a try. See it getting a little darker? Getting a little better. Gonna have us some barbecue. Yum yum. Alright, now we've got our ribs off of the grill. They have been smoked. They're nice and red. That red color, again, that is caused by the smoke itself. And then the sauce that we were working on earlier, look at that. That beautiful ruddy brown sauce. Nice. Now, those ribs, they look quite interesting. We want to see how well they cooked up, right? So let's take, just cut right through the middle of that. Oh, I think I was catching a bone there. Look at that. Just a little bit of a cut. It's pulling away clean. That's breaking away from the bone. That is cooked very well. So it's nice and tender. It's got that good red color running deep into the meat, if you'll notice here. And uh, that is exactly the way pork ribs should be cooked. Guys, I hope you enjoy yours. I'm going to enjoy mine. Please have a Texas beer with that, and that way you've got you a nice Texas barbecue. Enjoy it.